Well, well, welcome back. Without further ado, we're off. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I'm still doing Uku's voice. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess with me, the Doctor. Still doing that intonation thing, aren't I? In the last episode, we came to Optus Grounds, we defeated the Death Sword, and we got the Spinner, a cool item that we've not really had a chance to play around with yet. But here is our chance. Because this is the real cool thing with the spinner. It grinds. You can press B to jump off grind rails and it'll jump across sand and stuff like that. And it's just generally really cool. Speaking of really cool. Yeah, this is where this dungeon kind of decides to have its fun a bit. And also decides to completely abandon all pretenses of being a prison. Because this is the weirdest kind of roller coaster prison I've ever seen. Anyway, there are rails there. But we're actually going across them. We're going to utilize the fact that this thing can glide across sand pretty nicely. And grab some bombs. Then there's also, um, in front of us there, there's another chest, which we can get across to by just spinning over the sand. I'm not going to open it, though, because it has 20 rupees in it, and that does not interest me. What I am going to do, though, is go up here. And if we ride up here, some rails, as you can see here, go faster than others. These ones go very fast, dodge the spiky thing, roll up here. As you can see from the map, oh, there's a lot of, oh, bollocks. There's a lot of uh, chests around in this area. We're not actually going to be use getting most of them because most of them just have money in it. So if there's a chest I don't get, it's because it's either got money or just like arrows or bombs or something like that. The only one that has anything significant in is this one. Which has a piece of heart, which is awesome. We're actually quite close to the end of the dungeon now. It's one of my only problems with this dungeon. This part of it is actually really short. Oh no, oh no, we're just okay. Uh, like the part where you're actually like, I feel like, well... You know what? No, I will give my thoughts on the spinner a bit later. I'm not where I thought it was. Ooh, chest, I'll take it. Yeah, 10 yellow rupees, which we've got to put back. No, not 10 yellow rupees, that'd be 100. Also, yeah, the, but you don't have enough room, so let's put it back. That only fires up for rupees that are worth more than 20, so it just lets you take 10s and stuff like that. Anyway, we hop off here. That was very smooth. Uh, then we can ride up here and jump across here. You know, actually, I always hold the direction when you're jumping, but you actually don't have to. You just press B and you'll jump off in the right way. If you come up around here, basically, yeah, this is my issue with the spinner. It looks like it should be fun, but it's not. You just end up, you just like, you just stand and then press B occasionally. It's, it's theoretically, oh dear me. Ow, I blew myself right in the face there. <laughs> that sounded rude. But yeah, like it feels like it should be more fun than it is, which always slightly saddens me. Anyway, there's another 10 rupees in this chest, correct? I know this game way too well. And now we're kind of we're getting towards where we want to be. We want to come up here. We don't actually need to use the rails here. It's just slightly faster than walking. Actually, it's considerably faster than walking if we hop off. And up here is where we want to be. Now, this is a slightly more difficult bit where you have to time it well with the spiky things and hop over to the other side when one comes near you. And just like that, yeah, that's us done in that large room. Anything else there is just for chests. Um, we kind of did the majority of the roller coaster riding here. Also, freaking easiest big key ever there. Indeed, you've got the big key. You just gain access to the lair of this dungeon's boss. Which is where we're heading now, because if we head here, we actually, we came here immediately, so like, through there is the kind of, that's the kind of metal door that we came into the temple through. Um, like, not the one that was guarded by the pose. So, we're just kind of back here, except for now there's this thing in the floor. What looks like it fits in there. Spinner! And if we press B, Link does a really weird gesture, and I'm just kind of hammering B here. Um... I just never think I've ever actually talked about that. It's a phrase I use utterly naturally, and I don't even notice when I do it, but for, I think, what do people told me say? Um, there's a word that people use for when I say hammer, of like pressing a button repeatedly, um, but I don't know what it is, because um, I can't remember what the phrase is off the top of my head, but yeah, I always say hammer for like mashing a button repeatedly. It's not mash, it's a kind of more repeated thing. It's like the games actually say for when they want you to like hammer a button, but I can't remember what it is. If it comes back to me later, I will come out with it. Anyway, what we want to do here is jump off at about that point and glide into another spinner slot in the middle. Now, this one is slightly cooler. Come on, don't make me look foolish. There we go, it lights fire somehow. And then the camera zooms out and we realise what we're doing. Uh, we're bringing a massive spiral up out of the sands. I love the way the camera moves and that actually looks quite cool. But, yeah, it annoys me kind of that the... For what could be this awesome, fun roller coaster ride part of the dungeon. Uh, yeah, that was it. And it was really linear. It was just basically going A to B. Anyway, with that, let's head in and take on. Well, see what the. Uh, dungeon's boss through Big Key Door. Words hard.
You still live? How astonishing. No wonder some call you hero. But this is truly a bittersweet reunion. Truly! For I fear this is the last time I will ever see you alive. Twilight Fossil, Stal Lord. Is that the main character from Guardians of the Galaxy? Awful, awful pun. This is even crap. Anyway, so, yeah, this is Stal Lord. And what we have to do is, when the timing is right, press B to hop off the rails, and press B again to wallop him right in the vertebrae. They'll shatter, they'll fall down a bit, and we rinse and repeat. I really like that cutscene. Um, one thing I often complain about in games of, like, what's the issue with villains is villains who don't do anything. Um, but Zant is a very active villain. Let's try again. There's actually, right, so there's more of these kind of dead warriors in the way that you have to kind of smash through. But yeah, Zant really kind of is the opposite of that, that for most of the game, he's not just doing nothing. He's basically, when, by the time you start, he's conquered the world. He comes and he fucks up Midna in that kind of scene after the late bed temple. Then there he actively comes like that. You feel like he is a real threat rather than just waiting in his tower for you to come and challenge him while you get stronger and stronger, which most games do kind of do to a certain degree with their villains. Um, but yeah, Zant there, it's, it's pretty badass. Um, and oh, no, oh, came close. Oh, rib hand, we're okay. Yeah, you want to kind of keep moving here. If you fall off for any reason, like if you end up falling off the spinner and basically if you fall into the sand, in the sand in the center, oh, you will sink and die. We well, won't die, but basically it'll reset the boss pattern and you have to do it all again, which is slightly infuriating. Basically now, like now we're on the third hit for him, he's got a complete contingent. Oh, under the ribcage. Under the ribcage! Oh, okay, now. He's got a complete contingent of undead warriors. I don't know what they're called. They're definitely not Stalfoss. They're kind of more zombie-like than a Stalfoss. He's got a complete contingent of them around that him, so we need to... Oh! Straight into the spike. Um, so we need to kind of get them out of the way first. There should be a little opening here that I made. Yep, and wallop! So, with that, what we need to do is come out to the end of the middle, and there is a nice spitter pad that we can use. Yeah, you didn't really think it was going to be that easy, was it? Yes, we're now we're getting to the second half of the game now, basically, post uh, Midna's Desperate Hour. Therefore, bosses now have the tendency to have two forms, and I think pretty much all of them do. Um, and this one's, again, this one kind of annoys me in this fact of, look what we're doing, this should be fun, but I'm literally just sitting here. Then as we get close to Cell Lord, he'll charge up an energy beam, press B. He'll charge up another one, press B. And another one, press B. And you'll notice we're slowly getting closer to him. And basically, as long as you jump at the last possible moment, you'll get next to him and then wallop in the mouth. And down we go. Yeah, it kind of should be more fun than it is, but anyway, we can kind of do some serious damage to him there. If you use jump attacks here, it makes a hell of a difference. Like, you get a lot of jump attacks in, and each one of these is doing twice the damage that a normal set of four sword hits would do, so... Go us. Now we've kind of damaged him a fair bit. You will see now, there are these kind of spike things. And those spike things move very weirdly. It took me a while to work out what's going on with them there. They kind of... You see them kind of going around to the left, above and below you. The reason is because they're going in the same direction as you. But they 
going slower than you, so they are, you're I'm, I'm actually basically speeding up and catching up with them because you spin really fast on these things. So you have to keep an eye on them as well as on Stout Lord because we're about to hit one actually, I think. And basically, yeah, jump at the last possible moment. You'll make as the best possible distance towards Stout Lord's face as you can. Five jumps, usually. Oh no, damn it, I left it too late. Okay, what I was gonna say is usually. Oh my god, he's right there. Oh, he's shooting me on the ground. That's nice. Yeah, usually five jumps is enough to for, to be close enough to him to hit him in the mouth. See there, that one is actually ahead of us on the track above us, so we'll be catching up with it soon, so it gives you something to jump out of the way of. That's fun. Sorry, I'm mildly negative on this one, but I just, I just, I just don't like it. It's a bit weak. Um, like, it's fun, but not as fun as it should be. Like, there's so much they could have done with the spinner. They just made this a round circle, and they could have made it a twisty arena with all sorts of, like, corkscrews and fucking loop the loops and stuff. Okay, that might be a bit much. But you take my point, uh, that, like, you could do that kind of just dumb shit. Because, like, they've done that already in the dungeon with the spinner. They've just, like, they had basically a roller coaster section. This could have just been, like, uh, this could have been, like, when you take on fucking Mecha Bowser in Super Mario Sunshine. But, no, it's somewhat of a wasted opportunity, I feel like. Cool design on the boss, though. Anyway, once we've done enough damage to him. Come on. Oh, for God's sake. Usually if you use jump attacks, you only need two rounds of hits on him. Well, now it gets more interesting because now there's there's not only spin, spike trap things on our kind of central column, but they're also on the kind of the ones to the right. Oh, you made a lot of notice, by the way, so I'm just going to point it out to make it extra clear. Um, the one on the middle is spiraling up. The ones on the outside don't. They just circle around. So in order to actually make progress upwards, which is the only way to make progress towards Stell Lord, you need to be on this kind of... Um, and you need to be on the inner track, the outer one. You don't make any progress vertically upwards. You'll tend, if you kind of jump with these, you will tend to kind of drop down to the next level so you do lose height with time. There we go. I think literally one jump attack will be enough to finish him now. Chances are. Nope. Okay, I was slightly wrong. Two jump attacks! Alright, Doctor, let's go. We're close to the Mirror of Twilight. Yeah, I will say, what I, for all the dissing that I give that boss fight, it is some, like, design-wise, it is really cool. Like, Stell Lord looks cool. I really love the concept of him, like, being brought to life by, like, Zant's dark magic through a fucking sword stuck in his head that then becomes his weak point. I think that's really cool. But yes, remember, we actually came here um, for the Mirror of Twilight. And if we look where we are now, we kind of climbed up through the depths of Arbiter's Grounds and are actually on the kind of Colosseum section at the top of it now. Because yes, we actually didn't just come here to defeat the boss and get something for it. We came here for the Mirror of Twilight, which is now actually somewhere different, which is where we are now. Um, but, kind of once we get here... So this is the Mirror Chamber. Uh, no surprise, no prizes even for guessing what's held here. The answer is, uh, Dark Guardians. I mean, other things are also held here. Presumably a mirror, clues in the name, but hey, one, two, three, four, five. Fuck me. Well, they're clearly trying to test us. So, oh, let's take, okay, those two will be a good, good candidates for the finishing ones, so let's take that out. Uh, there's one here, then there'll be a loner somewhere. There's the loner. So that's three, uh, three, there we go. And these two will be good ones for taking out with a spin attack. So, come on, come near you little bastard. And kill! There we go, that was nice and straightforward. So we got a warp point here, which is useful. Um, and which implies we'll probably be coming back here later. Anyway, if you take the mirror up this- the mirror? <laughs> the, uh, spinner up here. Which I think is really cool. You're riding up a snake! It's like fucking Sunspear from Game of Thrones mixed with the Sand Goddess from, um... Ocarina of Time. But yeah, spinner slot at the top, pump it a bit, and that's the last we ever see of that sand thing. Because it goes down, and the temple raises up.
A dark entity lurks in the twilight. It houses an evil power. You who are guided by fate, you who possess the crest of the goddesses, hear us. At the command of the goddesses, we sages have guarded the mirror of twilight since ancient times. You seek it, but the mirror of twilight has been fragmented by mighty magic. That magic is a dark power that only he possesses. His name is Ganondorf. He was the leader of a band of thieves who invaded Hyrule in the hopes of establishing dominion over the Sacred Realm. He was known as a demon thief, an evil magic wielder renowned for his ruthlessness. But he was blind. In all of his fury and might, he was blind to any danger, and thus was exposed, subdued, and brought to justice. Yet. <laughs> By some divine prank, he too had been blessed with the chosen power of the gods. His abiding hatred and lust for power turned to purest malice. Perhaps that evil power has been passed on to Sant. You're just now figuring out where Sant got his power? It's far too late. Only the true leader of the Twilight can utterly destroy the Mirror of Twilight, so Zant could merely break it into pieces. Once broken by magic, the Mirror of Twilight became fragments, which even now lie hidden across the land of Hyrule. One is in the snowy mountain heights. One is in an ancient grove. And one is in the heavens. You who have been sent by the goddesses, you should be able to gather the three pieces. But you must be prepared, for a dangerous power resides in those fragments.